Hello to everyone, this is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV. I am Benjamin Bogosian and today we will discuss the potential future of Armenia-Azerbaijan and Armenia-Turkey relations. In recent months, we have seen some positive developments in Armenia-Azerbaijan relations. There were statements that Trilateral Commission, working on restoration of communications, achieved some results. Even uh, there are rumors that they almost agreed the route for the highway, which will connect Azerbaijan with Nakhijavan via the Sunik province, and the route for the railway in the same direction was agreed even before. Regarding the second track of Armenia-Azerbaijan relations, the start of the border delimitation and demarcation process, Armenia and Azerbaijan established their national commissions in late May 2022, and even there was a first meeting on Armenia-Azerbaijan border. Regarding the Armenia-Turkey relations, since December 2021, when Armenia and Turkey appointed special representatives for pushing forward the negotiations, we had four meetings. The last meeting took place on July 1st in Vienna, and this was the first meeting when some concrete results appeared. Armenia and Turkey agreed to open land border for third country citizens, and also agreement was reached to start direct air cargo trade between Armenia and Turkey. Of course, no clear timetable we have here, but according to understanding, at least in Armenia, most probably these two agreements will be realized until end of August 2022. So in this context, some may argue that, okay, there are the positive developments in both Armenia-Azerbaijan and Armenia-Turkey relations, which means that the potential for the new conflict or the new war is going down and down. But unfortunately, this is uh, not the case, because on Armenia-Azerbaijan relations, the core issue was the Nagorno-Karabakh, and the core issue was the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. And here, uh, we have even more complicated situations than before 2020 Karabakh war. Because if before the 2020 Karabakh war, both Armenia and Azerbaijan agreed that there is a Nagorno-Karabakh, it should have status, and the point of disagreement was about the nature of this status. Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh Republic authorities, they were claiming that Nagorno-Karabakh could never be part of Azerbaijan under any autonomy, and the only acceptable solution is Nagorno-Karabakh Republic independence with potential future unification with Armenia. While Azerbaijan accepting that yes, there is a Nagorno-Karabakh and it should have a status, was claiming that it was ready to provide highest level autonomy to Nagorno-Karabakh, but will never agree on independence. However, after the 2020 Karabakh war, now we face a totally different situation. Now Azerbaijan rejects mere existence of Nagorno-Karabakh, telling that there is no Nagorno-Karabakh, that is why he is not going to discuss the status of this non-existent entity with anyone, be it Russia, be it Armenia, or be it OSCE means group, or in any other multilateral formats, like um, Armenia-Azerbaijan-Russia, or Armenia-Azerbaijan-European Union. While Armenian government insists that Nagorno-Karabakh exists, that uh, negotiation should be continued within OSCE means group format, yes, Armenian government started to hint that maybe he will accept the status of Nagorno-Karabakh with wide autonomy within Azerbaijan and with international solid guarantees, including a permanent deployment of peacekeepers. But Armenian government continues to claim that Nagorno-Karabakh exists, uh, the rights of Armenians should be protected, protected, and the status of Nagorno-Karabakh should derive from these rights. While authorities of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic claim that no status within Azerbaijan cultural autonomy, political autonomy, some other form of autonomies, or mixed form of autonomies, they are not able to provide any rights or any guarantees to the Armenian population, which means that if Nagorno-Karabakh is part of 
Azerbaijan, it will very closely bring us to the situation of ethnic cleansing. If not uh, large-scale killings and massacres, at least forced mm, de deportation. So now we have a situation when Armenia and Azerbaijan even they do not agree about the existence of Nagorno-Karabakh. From Azerbaijani point of view, there is no Nagorno-Karabakh. From Armenian point of view, there is a Nagorno-Karabakh. And negotiations should be continued. And at least Nagorno-Karabakh should have very wide autonomy within Azerbaijan and the solid international guarantees and, other, and under the permanent deployment of foreign military force there to provide guarantees and protect Armenians. While Nagorno-Karabakh authorities claim that they will never agree on any autonomy within Azerbaijan, regardless it will be political autonomy, cultural autonomy, or some of mix. So while there are positive developments in uh, two tracks on Armenia-Azerbaijan relations, restoration of communications and the start of the border delimitation and demarcation process, on the key issue, status of Nagorno-Karabakh, we see the stalemate. And this means that if uh, there are no ways to overcome this stalemate, and as of now, I don't see any way to overcome this stalemate because I don't believe that anyone in Armenia or in Nagorno-Karabakh will accept Azerbaijani rhetoric that, okay, there is no Nagorno-Karabakh, and all which Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh can do is to receive Azerbaijani citizenship and live happily in Azerbaijan with Azerbaijani passports. And also, it's very unlikely that, especially after the victory of 2020 war, Azerbaijan authorities will agree even to the some wide autonomy for Nagorno-Karabakh with international guarantees and with permanent deployment of international peacekeeping forces. So this issue will remain, and even if there will be final decisions made on restoration of communications, and even if uh, highway and uh, railway will be opened to connect Azerbaijan with Nakhijevan via Sunik, or connect Armenia with Iran via Nakhijevan, or Armenia with Russia via Azerbaijan, the problem of Nagorno-Karabakh, the future of Nagorno-Karabakh, the status of Nagorno-Karabakh will be there, and it has significant potential to derail any positive developments in any other tracks. Regarding Armenia-Turkey relations, first of all, we should understand that we are speaking simply about normalization of relations. This is not rapprochement, and this is not reconciliation. Simply, Armenia and Turkey may end with uh, opening uh, diplomatic, establishing diplomatic relations and opening land border also for citizens of Turkey and Armenia. And even in this case, it's not mandatory that uh, Armenia should open embassy in Ankara or Turkey should open embassy in Yerevan. For example, Turkish embassy in Georgia or in any other country, in Moscow, for example, can cover Armenia, while Armenian embassy in um, Georgia, Iran or Russia can cover also Turkey. But this will mean mere normalization of uh, relations. And it does not mean that if Armenia-Azerbaijan will come to the another war about the future and status of Nagorno-Karabakh, Turkey will not fully support Azerbaijan. We have many examples in the history when countries having not only diplomatic relations and open borders, but also friendly relations, then became enemies and attacked each other. For example, let's take Syrian example. In the late 2000s, from 2006 until 2000, end of 2010, Turkish-Syrian relations were developing very rapidly. There was a huge e economic uh, cooperation, trade, even Turkey and Syria established strategic uh, council comprising of leaders of the state, ministers of state, and it seems that Turkey and Syria are moving toward greater and greater cooperation with huge economic interdependence and economic benefits. But uh, these processes did not prevent Turkey from attacking Syria starting from late 2011, and we all know that currently Turkey occupies part of Syria and even openly states that it is going to occupy another part of Syria under the pretext of uh, fund fighting against the Kurdish uh, terrorists, or, they, or as Turkey calls them, against Kurdish terrorists of PYD and YPG, or Syrian Democratic Forces, which controls huge swathes of northeastern part of Syria with United States um, protection. So, Overall, now it's very difficult to say if Armenia and Azerbaijan are going towards the peace or they are going towards the war. Because yes, there are some positive developments, but again, the core issue is the future and status of Nagorno-Karabakh. And here, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh Republic have totally divergent views, which means that no one can exclude that at the end of the day, uh, we will have another war in the South Caucasus. And in this case, even if there will be diplomatic relations opened between Turkey and Armenia, it does not mean that Turkey will not fully support Azerbaijan in this military conflict, as Turkey did in the 2020 Karabakh war. So in this context, uh, from the international 
organizations or international society or community point of view, I believe the key here is not to make efforts to change the new status quo which emerged after the 2020 war, because there are little hopes that the status quo can be changed without terrible implications for Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh or even for some part of Armenians living in the Republic of Armenia in the region such as Sunik, Gelar Kunik or Vyodor. The core mission of the international community should be trying tama somehow to stabilize this new uh, status quo emerged after the 2020 war and make efforts not to find a final solution, which seems quite unlikely, but to try to stabilize the situation and make some actions and developments, including confidence building measures, trying to prevent the new coming war. Because the Third Karabakh War, if we, have, if we are going to have a Third Karabakh War, it may have even more devastating outcomes for the region. Thank you, and we will meet soon.